the world is going to consume almost twice as much energy 30 years from now as, as it does today. Climate change is coming, and so we need to actually innovate ahead of that, the, the negative effects. We need innovation that gives us energy that's cheaper than today's hydrocarbon energy that has zero CO2 emission and is as reliable as today's overall energy system. And it's when you put all those requirements together, you go, wow, uh, that we need an energy miracle. Now, that may make it seem too daunting to people, but miracles in science, miracles are happening all the time. Here, in an interview with The Atlantic, we hear Bill Gates speaking about the future implications of the energy market if we do not evolve it. He is about to speak about a number of options we should be looking at to encourage us as a global community to stop using fossil fuels. It's a climate change because there's so many possible solutions. It's not like the Manhattan Project where we're saying, I don't think anyone's saying, hey, pick just one approach and, and pick some ranch in New Mexico and just have those guys kind of hang out there. Here, we want to give a little bit of money to the wild-eyed guy who thinks the high wind will work. We want to give a little bit of money to the guy who thinks taking sunlight and making oil directly out of sunlight will work. That's the kind of thing that, that we should be funding more of. As you can see, he believes in experimentation to see what could work better and not just putting blind faith into one big project. We will now see him talk of some of the flaws in some of the ideas most commonly viewed as the future of sustainable energy and how we can learn and prepare from their limitations. Talk a little bit more about some of the technologies you're most excited about, where you see the greatest potential for a really kind of game-changing breakthrough. Well, if you talk to most people, they, I think, expect that uh, wind plus solar photovoltaic, solar PV, right. solar electric, isn't that going to eventually come and solve this problem? Now, unfortunately, solar PV is still not economic, but the biggest problem of all is the, this intermittency. That is, we need energy 24 hours a day. If somebody is freezing to death in their apartment, we want energy now. We can't say, hey, wait a few days. The primary new zero CO2 sources are intermittent. Now, nuclear is a non-CO2 source, but it's had its own problems in terms of costs, you know, big safety problems, making sure that you can deal with the waste, making sure that the plutonium isn't used to make weapons. I personally, I, I, I think we should continue those things, but I think there's many other things, including trying to get rid of nuclear problems, uh, including the solar chemical approach, including high wind, 